Welcome back to Eurofootball Daily for this week's edition of Euro Transfer Talk. There's a lot to cram into this one, so let's get straight into it. We start with one of European football's hottest youngsters, as yet another club has entered the race for Shakhtar Donetsk winger Mikhaila Modric. The 21-year-old has burst onto the scene for the Ukrainian club over the past 12 months, first catching the eye after collecting four assists in a single game for the Premier League champions last December. And upon Ukrainian football's return, arguably no one has hit the ground running faster than Modric. Whilst he has just one assist to his name in domestic action, he's doing wonders for his wider continental profile with his performances in the Champions League. The right footer who plays off the left flank bagged one goal and set up two more in his side's 4-1 demolition of RB Leipzig during the opening week, before doubling his European tally in a 1-1 draw with Celtic last week. Shakhtar turned down an offer of 30 million euros from Everton during the summer window, while Brentford were also keen on bringing the five-time capped international to the Premier League, but couldn't come to an agreement despite being willing to break their transfer record to make it happen. Arsenal and Newcastle were also said to be interested, along with La Liga side Sevilla. But now there's a new favourite for his signature, and that's Liverpool. But any club intent on signing Modric, whether it be this January or next summer, will have to fork out big money, according to club legend and current director of football, Jerry Cerna. The former Croatian international told CBS Sports, after Mbappe and Vinicius Jr, he's the best player in Europe in his position. If someone wants to buy Modric, they must spend a lot of money and respect our club and our president. The player has already spoken of his dream to move to the Premier League, saying it would be hard to say no following interest from Mikel Arteta's Arsenal side, although also admitting he wouldn't force a move away from his current club. As ever though, we want to hear from you. Where do you think he could end up and how much would it take to prize him away from Shakhtar? Let us know in the comment section below. Next up, we head to Barcelona, where one of the more bizarre moves in recent years has emerged. According to Mundo Deportivo, the Blaugrana are considering a move for Real Madrid winger Marco Asensio when his contract expires next summer. The 26-year-old, once considered one of the most exciting emerging Spanish players, has continued to struggle for minutes under Carlo Angelotti this term, with his 12 league minutes ranking 19th in the Los Blancos squad, only above Casemiro, who joined Manchester United over a month ago. When he has played, he has shown he still has the ability to contribute, scoring 10 league goals last term in just over 1,700 minutes, four more than he ever managed in a league campaign. Surpassed by Rodrigo and with Valverde often preferred on the right wing this season, we struggle to see the 28 capped Spaniard playing a major role this campaign. But in our opinion, the links to Barcelona don't really make sense. The Blaugrana embarked on a huge summer of investment, spending 156 million euros, bringing in seven players, including Rafinha, who cost the club 50 59 million euros. With the Brazilian Usman Dembele, Ansu Fati and Memphis Depay all contributing to Barcelona's excellent start to the new season, with Dembele in particular in spectacular form, we don't believe Asensio should swap a squad role at the Bernabeu for one at the Camp Nou, especially given the inevitable hate that would follow. Continually linked with Milan over the last 18 months, we believe that a move to the San Siro to compete with the likes of Salamakas and Junior Messias for a starting spot, a battle he is likely to win, would be much more beneficial to his long-term future. One thing is for sure, having averaged 0.4 expected goals per 90 last term, not far off of Vinicius 0.5, he needs to be playing first team football somewhere fast. Which side do you think would suit him best though and can you make sense of these Barcelona links? Let us know down below. With nine sides outscoring Manchester United this season, including 20th place Leicester City, the Red Devils are widely expected to plunge into the striker market in the coming windows. And according to rumours, Eric Ten Hag's principal target could be Benfica forward Gonzalo Ramos. The 21-year-old picked up just eight goal involvements in 17 starts last season, but the departure of Darwin Nunes has given him an opportunity he's taken with both hands, the youngster notching four goals and an assist in only six match tweets so far this campaign. That puts Ramos at a contribution every 90 minutes, and with Ronaldo clearly a rotation player for Ten Hag and his other attackers more comfortable in wide areas, a £25 million bid for the striker could be forthcoming. But it's unclear whether that would be enough to get a deal done, as Newcastle failed with a move for Ramos over the summer and Benfica have slapped a £100 million Pound buyout clause on the player, suggesting they expect another stellar payday on a man who joined their academy at 12 years old. 
It's a bit soon to fork out big money on Ramos. He's got just 71 career games and 22 goals to his name, but over four shots a game, all from inside the penalty area, and a mammoth 3.6 tackles and interceptions in each Champions League appearance over the last year, indicate that he could add both cutting edge and work rate to be United side in desperate need of both. After their big outlay on Anthony, trying to nab a star before the feet skyrockets is a smart play for the Red Devils, but we don't see Benfica playing along. We'll file this one under the believe it when you see it folder, as for us, a mid-table side still makes more sense as Ramos's next move. We head to West London now where Graham Potter is reportedly considering how to strengthen his side and Calcio Mercato believe he might be up for using Romelu Kaku as a make-weight to make an audacious bid for Harry Kane. 29-year-old Lukaku has only managed three appearances for Inter, scoring one goal, before succumbing to a muscle injury. But there is no doubt that when fully fit, the 102-capped Belgian international is a significant step up on the 36-year-old Edin Dzeko. But Potter will be hoping that things don't go too well for Lukaku in Milan, as he wants to utilise him in a swap deal for Harry Kane. Everyone knows that Conte loves Lukaku. He wanted to sign him when he was in charge of Chelsea, and certainly got the best out of him at Inter. With the frontman's 24 goals and 10 assists, in 36 league games, proving crucial to the Nerazzurri's title triumph in 2020-21. Potter will be hoping to prey on that relationship and persuade Lukaku to join Spurs, with Kane going the other way. But look, let's be serious, we struggle to see this happening. At 29 years old, it's difficult to imagine Kane leaving Spurs, and if he was to, surely it would be to a club guaranteed to not only finish above the Lily Whites, but challenge for the Premier League title. The Blues find themselves seven points behind Spurs at the time of writing, albeit having played a game less, whilst they haven't finished with more than 74 points in a league campaign since Conte's departure in 2016-17. With Man City and Liverpool having raised the bar significantly, we can't imagine Chelsea challenging until Pep and Klopp leave, by which time Kane will be nearing the end of his career and if not certainly his prime. In short, as much as Conte loves Lukaku, he'll no doubt be very happy with Kane who has 6 goals and 1 assist in 7 league games so far this season. There is absolutely no chance Daniel Levy allows Spurs' golden child to leave North London for one of their fiercest rivals, to bring in a player who was largely underwhelmed at both Man United and Chelsea. This rumour can very much go in the bin. Staying with Chelsea for our final story of this week's Euro transfer talk, since the Bowley clear plate capital takeover in the summer, it's been all change at Stamford Bridge. Pre-Thomas Tuchel's departure, club director Marina Gronowska left her role in June, followed by technical director Per Cech, amongst many other senior staff members. Chairman Todd Bowley was named interim sporting director, with the Athletic reporting that the Blues were aiming to secure a new sporting director by the start of the World Cup in November. And now, according to the same outlet, the 2021 Champions League winners have identified Red Bull Salzburg's Christoph Freund as their top candidate. The Telegraph's Matt Law stated on Sunday that the Austrian's appointment at Chelsea was imminent following a round of positive talks. Whilst the 45-year-old did not rule out a switch to West London, in an interview with Sky Sports Austria after Chelsea's 1-1 draw with Salzburg last week, Frun said, Chelsea is a huge club in transition. I can't say exactly what will happen in the next few weeks and months. You should never rule anything out in football, and Chelsea are such a huge club. Everything seemed to point towards Froon's appointment, and that was until a breakdown in talks, as according to The Athletic, there is now a strong chance that he stays in Salzburg. The Austrian champions have reportedly won the battle to keep hold of him, and Chelsea are now set to talk to other candidates, with interest in the role said to be high. It means the process to make this key appointment is expected to take a number of weeks to conclude. Chelsea were without a full-time sporting director during the summer transfer window, which saw them spend over £250 million on new players. As previously mentioned, an underwhelming start sees them below Fulham in the Premier League, currently sitting in 7th place. And with the majority of their new signings yet to hit the ground running, Bowley will be keen to secure their new sporting director as soon as possible, so they can start planning early for the January window. That was today's episode of Euro Transfer Talk, but let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. And is there any other rumours as well that we've missed? Let us know down there. If you want to watch more Euro Football Daily content, then click on screen right now. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe.